Hey everybody, welcome to The Foreign Fork. Today we're gonna to be making picadillo from Cuba and we're gonna be making it in the pressure cooker. So keep on watching this video and I'm gonna show you how to make it step by step from home. Hey everybody, welcome to the Foreign Fork Kitchen. My name is Alexandria and this is the Foreign Fork where we are cooking one meal from every country in the world. Today we are exploring Cuba and we're gonna be making a traditional Cuban recipe called picadillo. It is a delicious meal and I'm excited to walk you through how to make it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is um, we're gonna use the pressure cooker and we're gonna turn it to the saute function. I have two tablespoons of olive oil that I'm gonna pour here into the pressure cooker. And then I have one medium Yukon gold potato that I have peeled and cubed. And that's what I have right here. And I'm gonna put that into the pressure cooker that is on the saute function with the olive oil. And I'm just gonna use my uh, wooden spoon here to kind of mix it up and let it saute for maybe like five minutes until the potatoes start to soften a bit. All right, once your potatoes have started to soften, then it's time to take them out of the pressure cooker and just reserve them on the side. Next, I'm gonna add another tablespoon of oil to the pressure cooker again. And then I have one medium onion that I've chopped and one green bell pepper. And I will again saute these until they are nice and translucent. If you feel like you're, the bottom of your pot is getting dry um, and you need to add more oil, you can do that as well. Once your onions start to turn translucent, you can add about one teaspoon of chopped garlic you're gonna need an additional teaspoon later, so just reserve that for now. Um, and then a half of a teaspoon of oregano, and again, you'll need the other half of the teaspoon later on. And you can saute that up for a minute or two until it becomes fragrant. It's getting fragrant. It smells really good. As you're stirring, use your spoon to kind of scrape up any brown bits that are stuck on the bottom of the pressure cooker. Um, any brown bits that are left there when you actually go through and pressure cook it um, may lead to a burn notice, so make sure that you're scraping up anything that's left over there. All right, this is done for the time being, and so I'm gonna turn the pot off. Now the next thing that I'm gonna do is I have one pound of ground beef, and I'm gonna add that into the pot, and I'm gonna use the residual heat from the pot and just break it up a little bit with the spoon until it's in pretty small chunks and can cook pretty easily. You don't have to brown it completely right now because when you turn on the pressure cooker, um, it will continue to cook the meat the rest of the way. But for now, we just wanna break it up into small enough pieces that when it cooks in the pressure cooker, it cooks into like a ground beef texture as opposed to chunks. Once the beef is broken up, you're gonna add in one 15 ounce can of tomato sauce as well as one quarter cup of raisins. And the raisins are optional. If you don't want the raisins, you don't have to add them. Um, I think they add like a fun new taste to it. Okay, then you can use the liquid in the pot to just break up the meat the rest of the way. Lastly, we are going to add those potatoes back in that we had started cooking earlier. A quarter cup of white wine, two tablespoons of green olive juice that are going to come in the same jar as your one half cup of green olives. And I took the olives out of the um, jar and then I sliced them up so that they're nice tall, small pieces. And I'll put all of that in here as well and then give it a nice mix to combine. Again, scrape the bottom of the pot, make sure that there's no brown bits left on there that could burn, and then put the lid on the pot, seal the pressure valve, and cook it on high for five minutes. Once it's done cooking on high for five minutes, you'll do an immediate pressure release and it should be done from there. Once your cook time has completed, you're gonna open up the lid of your pressure cooker and all that beautiful steam is gonna come out. And your picadillo is ready. So you can mix it up and you can see that all of that meat is nice and cooked and is ready for you to put wherever you wanna eat it. So I have a bowl of rice ready, and I'm gonna put this on top of my rice, uh, but you can also um, fold it into empanadas if you want, and like I said, you can also put it in the center of some mashed potatoes and fry the mashed potato balls and make papas rellenas, and oh my, that is so good too. 
a nice steaming bowl of Cuban picadillo. I actually, I've never been to Cuba and I have always, always really wanted to go to Cuba. So if I have to make some Cuban food at home to feel like I've experienced it, I know it's not the same, but I'll do what I can. I love making this recipe because it really changes up my dinner routine. I love having some different flavors in here and some combinations that I wouldn't normally throw together like raisins and beef, but it is actually so good when it's all thrown together like this. So if you want to make this at home, I will leave the link to the written instructions down in the description below this video. And then don't forget to check out all of the other recipes that I have on my site. We have uh, pressure cooker recipes. We have universal recipes, we have um, recipes from all around the world, and I am so excited for you to keep watching and keep following along on my journey. Thank you so much for joining me this week, guys, and I will see you next week. It's burning my mouth. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Please hold. Yep.